everyone. Welcome to Carmen's Australian Storytime. Today I thought I'd read a classic. I just realised I've got it upside down. Whoops. A classic called Hansel and Gretel. This is a very old story. And uh, this one says now you can read. So you might actually be able to read the story along with me. Let's see. There's no blurb because this is just one of those classic tales, fairy tales. Do you know the story of Hansel and Gretel? Once there was a woodcutter. He was very poor. One day he said to his wife, what will become of us? We are so poor we cannot feed the children. His wife said, we will take the children into the forest and leave them there. They must take care of themselves. That is not a very kind thing, is it? Hansel and Gretel were listening at the door. Gretel began to cry. What will become of us, she said. Do not cry, said Hansel. I will look after you. When it was dark, Hansel went into the garden. He filled his pockets with pebbles. Then he went to bed. Now, I don't think that kind of thing should happen. But it's a fairy tale, right? Fairy tales usually have happy endings. Next day, the woodcutter took the children into the forest. His wife gave them both, both a piece of bread. Hansel's pockets were full of pebbles. Gretel had to put the bread in her apron. Hansel kept looking back at the house. What are you looking at? asked the woodcutter. I'm looking at my little cat, said Hansel. But really, he was dropping pebbles on the path. It's very clever. When they were deep in the forest, the woodcutter made a fire. Sit and rest, he said to Hansel and Gretel. When we have cut the wood, we will come back for you. Hansel and Gretel waited and waited. Their father did not return. At last, they went to sleep. When Hansel and Gretel woke up, it was dark. They were alone. Gretel began to cry. Do not cry, said Hansel. As soon as the moon rises, I will take you home. The moonlight shone on the pebbles Hansel had dropped on the path. They followed them all the way home. He's so clever. Some days later, Hansel and Gretel heard their stepmother plotting again. When she was asleep, Hansel went to fill his pockets with pebbles, but the door was locked. He could not get into the garden. Gretel began to cry. Do not cry, said Hansel. I'll think of something. Next morning, their stepmother gave them both a piece of bread. Hansel put his bread into his pocket. He broke it into crumbs. Why do you always look back, asked the woodcutter. I'm watching my pigeon, said Hansel. But really, he was dropping crumbs along the path. The children were left as before. The moon rose. Hansel looked for the crumbs. They were not there. Birds had eaten them. Now Hansel and Gretel were lost. Three days passed. Then they saw a white bird. It wants us to follow it, said Hansel. Hansel and Gretel followed the bird. It led them to a house with walls made of gingerbread. It had a roof made of cake and windows made of sugar. Yum! Hansel and Gretel were hungry. They broke off a piece of the house. They began to eat. Nibble, nibble, like a mouse. Who is nibbling at my house? said a voice. The children thought it was the wind and took no notice. The door of the house opened and an old woman came out. The old woman asked them into the house. She gave them food to eat and a bed to sleep in. The children thought she was kind. She was really a witch. She had made the gingerbread house to trap children. She ate children for dinner. What? The witch shut Hansel in a stable. It had bars in the door. Then the witch woke Gretel. Cook something for your brother, she said. I want to fatten him up before I eat him. Gretel wept, but she had to do as she was told. Hansel was given the best food. Gretel was given the scraps. Every day the witch made Hansel put his finger through the bars. Every day Hansel held out a bone instead of his finger. The witch could not see very well. 
Every day she said, He's not fat enough yet. Ansel is very clever, isn't he? One day the witch could wait no longer. Fetch some water, girl. Fill the pot, she said. When that was done, she said, Crawl into the oven, girl. Make sure it is hot. The witch was going to push Gretel into the oven. Gretel guessed what the witch was going to do. I do not know how to get into the oven, she said. Silly girl, she said, said the witch. I will show you. Gretel stood behind the witch. She pushed the witch into the oven and she closed the door. This is a horrible story, isn't it? It only took a moment to free Hansel. They filled their pockets with treasure from the witch's house and they set off to find their way home. A white duck took them part of the way. At last they came to a part of the forest they knew and soon they were at their very own house. The woodcutter was very glad to see them. He told them their stepmother was dead. They sold the treasure and the three of them lived happily ever after. Now that is a classic fairy tale, but what a gruesome one. Although I do like how at the end they found their way home and they lived happily ever after, which is usually how the fairy tales end, right? And all these appear in the pages of the story. Do you remember who the woodcutter is? Yep, their dad. And there's Hansel and Gretel and the pebbles and the bread and the bird and the witch and the gingerbread house. And could you retell the story and use those pictures to create your very own version? I wonder what would happen in your version of the story. We have some pretty funny ones in our versions at school that we make up. And I wonder if you can tell me which pages you will find those pictures on if you go back through the book. Thank you for joining me on Carmen's Australian Storytime. And look where I am today. I'm in the city and that is our big story bridge behind me. Such a beautiful piece of history in Brisbane. Thank you for joining me and I look forward to reading to you again soon. Bye for now.